I've got several boxes filled with memories. I've got stacks of photos, pebbles from the sea. Still get apprehensive when I'm in the unknown. I couldn't tell a number, but how I'd love to be back home. Oh. Happy Sunday. I thought I would try something new on my channel and do a daily vlog, which I feel like I never really do. I just wanted to give it a try. I woke up early this morning. The sun was still rising. It was like 7.30 in the morning and I was like, you know what? Let's just vlog today because it was like a great sunny morning. I was like, this is a great day to vlog. And then it started chucking it down rain and now it's pouring outside. But I was like, you know what? That's even better. It's, it's cozy. It's full. I just want to have like a nice chill day hanging out and talking to you guys. You already saw me have like my chill morning routine. And then the only plan I have for today is I'm seeing the Taylor Swift movie tonight in the movie theaters. So I'll bring you guys as well. But this morning I've had the best slow morning. Like it's already almost 11. This is how I love spending my Sundays. Just like having a slow, easy morning. And I spent all morning listening to my audiobook on Spotify. And this video is kindly sponsored by Spotify, which I never thought I would say in my life because you guys know how much I love them. I've made Spotify playlist videos in the past i listened to all my podcasts on there i listened to my music on there and now i can listen to my audiobooks on there so it's just like a one-stop shop for everything i love and i love audiobooks i've talked about this before but some books just hit even better in audio format and i've really had a newfound appreciation for them this year and the fact that now there's books on Spotify, this is like my Super Bowl. I'm so excited. The book I started listening to this morning is Once Upon a Broken Heart by Stephanie Garber. And I listened to it on 1.6 speed. I feel like it just helps me comprehend it so much better when it's like you can control the speed and how fast they're talking. And like, listen. One half of a broken heart, a symbol of the faded Prince of Hearts. But like, I love hearing the voices of the characters and when the actors voicing it just do a really good job of like the dialogue and explaining things. I feel like it just complements my reading experience so much because obviously I love reading physical books, but something about listening to the books, it just adds to the experience. And I feel like I get even more obsessed and even more immersed. And I love it because I never have to put my book down. You know when you're reading a good book and you're laying in bed and you're like, I really have to get things done. Or like even this morning, I was like, I really need to go make breakfast. Like I'm starving, but I don't want to stop reading. You can just keep continue listening like it's so nice it's like multitasking i always just put my airpods in put my book on clean my apartment get my tasks done i listen to it when i go for walks obviously i can't go for a walk today because it's pouring rain but like you just get so much more reading time in because you get to listen to it while you're doing other things i just can't recommend books on spotify enough but yeah i decided to start once upon a broken heart because i've seen so many people talking so highly of it and i felt left out kind of like when the fourth wing was being talked so highly about and I wanted to kind of transition to the fantasy genre. So I thought listening to it on Spotify would be like a good, a good start into fantasy. Like I'm trying to get into it. So let me know if you've read this book, if you recommend it, if you think it's good, if you think it's a good start into fantasy, because if not, Spotify has like hundreds of thousands of other audiobooks I can choose from. I kind of need to clean. My brother was staying with me and he just left. There's still an air mattress in here. I have all these broken down boxes. I have to do my dishes, like just some like boring house stuff I have to get done. cleaning i'm going to read a little bit because i'm filming a reading vlog at the same time as i'm filming this video so i'm gonna read a little bit but i'm kind of really in the mood to watch tv I'm currently watching sweet magnolias as per your guys's recommendation and it's so cute because it takes place like right outside of charleston i've also been like kind of bouncing around re-watching gilmore girls but i'm trying to find a new show to watch after i finish sweet magnolias so if you have any recommendations where it's like romance focused I'd really appreciate that. I was considering like out 
Outlander or Virgin River or I don't really know. Those are some of the ones that were like coming to mind because I feel like I've watched everything else, but I don't really know if those have romance in them. So let me know. Just friends my house. The only problem with this show though is that I literally don't care about the adults at all like i'm only watching this for like the kids the teens like their love stories and stuff every episode it just keeps going more downhill because it keeps focusing more and more on the adults and i'm like i just don't care about this i want the love stories from the teens like i literally only care about ty and annie right now I think it might be getting a little bit sunny out or at least the rain is stopping. It just looks really cloudy. I kind of want to go to a cafe because I need to edit really bad and I just cannot focus when I edit at home. I end up getting distracted. I go on my phone or I watch TV or like I start doing other tasks and it's been really helpful for me to get out of the house and like go to a cafe and sit down. So I think I'm going to do that and I have a lot to do so I might end up being there for a few hours which is okay because the movie isn't until later tonight. I also, my dresser got here so I could build that but I have no motivation. I wanted this to be a doing nothing day <laughs> and I already cleaned so that's enough tasks for today. I think I'll build my dresser in the next video. My bookshelves also came, which means library video soon. Oh, I'm just so building out. Like I just don't want to build anything ever again. But I feel really accomplished that my apartment is clean. The floors were clean. You know, when it's just like your floors, you just like feel like they start to get gross. I'm starting to feel like that. So I'm glad I mopped and stuff. Okay, I just threw on the coziest, comfiest outfit, which is why I love fall so much because I can literally wear things that are technically PJs outside of the house. Sorry, my dishwasher is so loud. But I'm currently packing up all my stuff to bring to the cafe to get some work done. I'm so excited because now I get to listen to my audiobook. Actually really nice and like crisp fall air out here so I think I'm gonna walk around a little bit since it's not raining anymore yeah. it's always so so busy out here on Sundays like I just had to like go through a whole maze of people but I ended up walking through the market now I'm gonna walk down by the water and I'm pretty sure it's super busy too because there's a cruise here today. Like, I didn't know this before moving here. I mean, why would I? But there's a cruise port here, and like, cruises actually come here very often. But there's one giant cruise ship here right now, so I think that's adding to the chaos of downtown. I've got scrapbook albums filled with childhood dreams. I've got cartoon stickers, cards for football teams. Still get sentimental. Life spins out of control I could turn the TV on Or I could take a trip back home oh, oh, oh. I went to my P.O. box I thought I would show you guys some of the cute little things that you guys sent me Like I got sent some jewelry These are from Naomi She sent me this cute cute little card and wrote me like a nice little message and then she sent me these three necklaces one of them has a moon on it and they just look so cute creations by naomi and then i was sent from the author herself which is so cool i love that so many of you guys have written books and this looks totally up my alley it's called chasing river by mc sakala cover is beautiful like and why is it giving like boarding school or like private school and the first thing i'm reading on the back is that she's a good girl with perfect grades who never broke the rules and never went out oh i know that i'm gonna like this she's been watching my channel since she was 14 she's 18 now and published her first story 18 congratulations and thank you so much then this i thought was the prettiest letter i'd ever seen she's like drawings all over it and this is from anna marie she also made this bookmark that says look at the moon but thank you so much another beautiful handwriting beautiful letter from katharina she's from germany i'm definitely putting these on the cork board thank you so much and then i got sent this is so so cute first of all the cutest little card like look there's a little lighthouse on it and it's from carrie she also sent me a copy of her first book she said i wanted to send you a copy of my debut novel unstable because it's a story about a girl who moves to a seaside town and starts a new life with all new friends and i thought it might be a perfect read as you settle into charleston wait that's so cool thank you so much carrie i can't wait to check out your book the cover's beautiful and then i also have this 
long letter from Onfall. Sorry if I'm saying that wrong. I'm so sorry. So sweet, so nice. Thank you so much for writing to me. And then I got sent the most beautiful card I've ever seen. Like, first of all, the envelope has like a page of a book on it. She's like decorated this beautifully. I opened up and immediately this watercolor bookmark came out. It's so cute. I think she painted that herself. And this is from Diana and even her letter is just so so cute. You guys just put so much time and effort into these and it's so beautiful. Thank you guys so much. I just got back from my little walk around town. I was really romanticizing my life, feeling like the main character listening to music. But then on my way home, I was like, I should get groceries and bake something with you guys because we're having a cozy little day and I feel like what's more cozy than baking, especially in the fall, like a cute fall treat. So then I went on TikTok and I looked up fall recipes and I talked about this in my last video, how I hate fruit desserts and I tried to expand my palate. So today I'm gonna conquer my fear again of eating a fruit dessert. So I found these apple pie cookies, a recipe on TikTok. Look at that. This is the person that made the Bridget Lucille. I thought apples were a safe bet to like making dessert, like can't go wrong with like cinnamon sugar and apples. So I'm making apple pie cookies today and then I'm hanging out with some of my friends tomorrow night. So I'm gonna bring these when I go. I'm very excited and I'm not the best cook by any means, but I do enjoy baking. This seems a little complex, but you know, what? it's fine. I also have to peel these apples and I don't have a cooler. So I'm literally gonna have to do it with a knife. So this might take me a second. I'm actually hand peeling these apples kind of like a boss, like this technique. Maybe this is my calling. Guys, my neighbor got a dog. It barks all day and it is quite the annoyance. Obviously that's not their fault, but it is not fun for me. That took so long, oh my God. Now we start making like the filling. Three tablespoons of sugar. One, two, three. Three tablespoons of brown sugar. One, two. Three. three tablespoons of cornstarch. See, that is weird to me. A half teaspoon of cinnamon. And a dash of nutmeg. What is a dash? But that was definitely more than a dash, but okay. And three fourths a cup of water. Stir well and bring to a boil over medium heat. It's not really combining. Okay, look, it's starting to like get chunky and thick. I think I'm actually doing this right. This is like what hers looked like. Okay, I think it's about ready. Okay, now I just added the apples into that. And while this simmers, I'm gonna cut the crust, I think. I'm just gonna, I might have too much. And I don't have that much time. Hopefully these don't have to bake for like longer than a half hour. Now I take these and like lay them across like an actual pie. I did not do them very even. <laughs> this is so cute. Now that it looks like an actual pie, kind of, I'm gonna use this to try to cut out cookie shapes. Oh, kind of worked. It's a little too small. I need a bigger thing. I'm gonna use this Starbucks cup because it's a lot bigger. So you'll be able to see more of the pie texture. Oh, that's perfect, okay. Ew, that made a gross noise. I hope that these taste good. Ew, <laughs> I really hate that noise that it's making. I love baking actually, this is fun. All that for literally like five cookies, six cookies is crazy, but I don't know whether to bake it with like all these edges around and then I'll just eat the edges. Now we just put the egg wash on. Use the back of the spoon. This just makes it golden brown, I think. They're in the oven, and why do they low-key look fire? Like, that looks so good. And then over here, <laughs> it's just all the remnants. I just, like, squished it into a ball in the corner so it also bakes, and then I can just eat it at home because it's going to be ugly. Those look so good. And they have to bake for 20 minutes, so. It smells actually heavenly in here. Like, oh my god, it smells like a bakery, and I want to cry tears of joy. But I have to leave in, like exactly 10 minutes in order to be on time because i'm meeting anna and the cookies have five and a half minutes left so in the meantime we should probably just pick out an outfit for the movie i know a lot of people are like dressing up for this but i'm not gonna be one of those people because i think i'm either gonna wear my horror merch i actually think i might wear my cardigan because i usually am cold in the movie theaters and i'm also not planning on like standing up and dancing i'd prefer to just sit let me find my cardigan though in this mess of a closet okay i was mid getting dressed and then the alarm went off so they're ready i'm just gonna take them out and let them cool off a little 
Oh my glasses are so up weight, I can't even see. Oh my god. Look. They're gonna look so much cuter when they're not like on this disgusting pan, but I'm obsessed. I set these all in like little plates to cool and while those are cooling, I thought we could try this random like mash that I put on the side of all the leftovers because it doesn't look pretty, but it's perfect for a taste test. Oh, I'm so excited. Mm. Oh my God, it's so hot, but oh my God. Wait, oh my God. That's low-key the best cookie I've ever had in my life. Oh my God, but I have to go, I'm in a rush, so I need to finish changing and stuff. Okay, here's my outfit. I picked out my cardigan, leggings, I got some little leg warmers on and my boots. And now I'm gonna go downstairs and meet Anna and she's gonna drive us over to go see the movie. We're here and I'm with Anna. I'm gonna have the matching vloggy this time. Oh my God, <laughs> look. Yay! Yeah. Yeah. Do you know what seats we are? <laughs> The girl next to us secured all yeah. of the stuff and we didn't. She's letting us pretend that we got 20 it. 20 bucks just for the bucket. It's not filled, <laughs> but like I would do it too. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> I'm crying already, everyone. Every conquest I have made would make me more of a boss to you. late that was a long movie obviously because it was like the whole three hour tour besides the songs that got cut not to spoil it for anyone so i won't say but anyways i enjoyed myself i had a good time i just chilled and relaxed and sang in my seat because that's what i preferred but my theater was very enthusiastic like we had people screaming we had people dancing which it does disrupt the movie experience and like sometimes I was getting frustrated. There's one thing like, okay, movie theater etiquette, but I feel like this was like, it was a concert movie, you know, like it was different. And, and also it, there was like a group of young girls in my theater, like probably like 11 to 14, like a group of all these girls standing in the front. And yes, they were being very, very loud. <laughs> and it was frustrating at times. And like everyone around me was kind of like, but then on my way home, I was doing some reflecting and I was like, I feel like girls are always told to like, dial it down why do you care so much like why are you getting so worked up why are you so emotional why do you care so much about celebrities and people always recommend them for that and i was like these are literally young girls enjoying something and having fun and being excited like i'm not gonna i'm not gonna be a hater for that like yes it was public place but like it was fun it was it was a concert movie it got me thinking as well I love being a fangirl. Probably the most prominent thing about my personality is that I'm a fangirl. Like, I built my entire social media based on it. Like, my whole social media started off as fan accounts, which I don't know if I've ever really talked about, but my YouTube channel, my Instagram, my Twitter, everything that I have now was once a fan account. Or actually, my YouTube wasn't, but I made it because of my fan account. I've had fan accounts since I was, like, nine years old. Um because I always felt like I couldn't express how much I loved things and how enthusiastic I was about things. I felt like no one cared, no one wanted to hear it and that I was annoying and no one had the same passions as me. But as soon as you went online and you had a fan account, you had like a fan community and it was amazing. And I've always been part of fandoms and had fan accounts. So I thought it would be fun to like go through the years of all the different things I've been a stan of in my life. So I made a list <laughs> and I thought we could talk about it. And I wanna hear all the things you guys have had like a fan phase or like, no, not even a phase, like things that you will be a fan of for the rest of your life. Like things that just stuck, like not like the quick, like, 
oh, I was obsessed with them at one point, but then I got over it. Things that just like made you who you are because I have a very prominent like list. Like there's been a lot of things that have come and gone, but I have a prominent list of things that single-handedly defined me as a person and got me to where I am today. So I thought I would tell you about them because I think that's fun. And I think a lot of us are fangirls and I love talking about it. And I think we should be loud about it because there's nothing to be ashamed of. Like my favorite quote, why else are we here if not to live with unreasonable passion for things? I truly feel that to my core because it makes life so much more fun. I don't care what anyone has to say. It truly does. It's so fulfilling. I don't even need the list for the beginning because I already know what the first thing was, which was One Direction. I think I was in fifth grade. I was on vacation in Arizona when What Makes You Beautiful came out. I was still living in New Jersey and I was on vacation with my family because they were considering moving and What Makes You Beautiful came out and it was on the radio and I heard it and I immediately made my dad download it on my iPod Nano and I listened to it on repeat. It was before Up All Night album even came out. I would listen to like the Harry Styles part where his voice gets really deep over and over and over again. As soon as I got home, I was like, I need to know everything about these boys. Got on my iPod Touch and watched every single YouTube video about these boys. The funniest moments, the interviews, the video diaries, every compilation I could find, every single thing that they had out at that time. And then I was a fan ever since. Like it never went away. And now I'm like a true and true Harry Styles fan. I love all of them, but like my fandomness like went to Harry, you know? That was like what got me into like stan culture. And I had a fan account on Twitter. I had a fan account on Instagram. My main Instagram account that I have to this day was my One Direction fan account. Like I'm pretty sure the Steph Bohr account that I have now used to be my fan account. If it wasn't, then I have no idea where that account went, but I'm like 99% sure the account that I use to this day was my fan account back when I was nine. <laughs> and I love that for me. So that was the first thing I got into. That introduced me to like stan culture at a very young age. And I went, I was reading fan fiction. That's when I read after on Wattpad. I was obsessed with Wattpad. That's what got me into reading. So the, literally One Direction got me to where I am today. <laughs> that is probably my biggest obsession of all time. But at that same time, I was also a fangirl of the British YouTubers. So it was like Zoella, Alfie, Marcus Butler, Joe Sugg, Casper Lee, Tanya Burr, Jim Chapman, Sprinkle of Glitter. I was obsessed with the British YouTubers. I don't know if I had a fan account for them. I think I did on Vine, which is so funny. I also had a One Direction Vine, but I think I had a British YouTubers Vine and I would make like edits. Like I would make Zelfie edits before they were dating. <laughs> and now they have kids, like, or they have a kid and one on the way. Isn't that crazy? I used to make ship edits before they were dating. So that was like the next thing I got into was the British YouTubers. I loved them. Oh my God. And when Zoella interviewed One Direction, it was my Super Bowl. I was like, this is crazy. And like Harry Styles called her fit or something. And I was like, oh my God, they're gonna date. That also completely changed my life because if you guys know, I studied abroad in Brighton. I chose Brighton because I was trying to study in England. I knew I wanted to be in England and I was trying to get into London, but all the programs were full. So I had like a second choice. I could go anywhere else. It was literally like, you can't go to London, but you can go anywhere else in England. I chose Brighton because I knew that Zoe and Alfie lived in Brighton and I knew it looked beautiful and it was a seaside town. And I was like, it's close enough to London. And I ended up temporarily moving there. And now it's my favorite place on earth. And I would literally do anything to be able to move back there. I say this all the time, so I'm not gonna get into it again. But again, standing the British YouTubers changed the course of my life. Like I ended up moving there, living there because of a passion I had when I was 11 years old. And that also didn't go away. Like I still watch Zoe and Alfie's videos religiously. Like their vlogs are my comfort. It's like the one thing that I've had consistently throughout the past 10 years that I like watch on YouTube. They're pretty much the only YouTubers I really like watch every video of. And I just think it's so special like seeing how that's influenced my life. And I actually did see Zoe on the street in Brighton, but she was on the phone and I didn't want to disturb her. So me and Lauren just looked and then giggled and I internally fangirled, but it would have been really cool to be able to have a conversation with them and be like, you guys changed my life. But I, I probably would have just stuttered and walked away anyway. So that was the next thing. Okay. 2019 hits. And I was always a Taylor Swift fan. I always liked her. I always defended her. You know how you can go on Instagram and you can go back in time and see the first things you ever commented on? If I can find the screenshots, I'll try to insert them here. But the first things I've ever commented on in, on Instagram were people from my school were posting like Taylor Swift memes, like hating on her and saying she has so many boyfriends and like that she's crazy. And I, it was in 2011, which means I was 10. I was defending her in the comments as I should. My 10 year old self being like, I forgot what I said exactly, but something like, She's literally only dated three guys. Like you're being so judgmental, like something like that. So that was like pre One Direction was I was a Swifty. I had 
My first CD I ever owned was debut Taylor Swift. I had a karaoke machine in my room that would play CDs and I would play it nonstop. I still have the, the album memorized in order because of that. And I had a Taylor Swift birthday party. We watched one of her movies. I forget if it was Fearless. I don't remember. We watched a Taylor Swift movie at one of my birthday parties. So I was a Swifty pre One Direction and then One Direction took over and I kind of like didn't really care about Taylor Swift anymore. I was still One Direction, One Direction, One Direction. Then Reputation came out and my cousins were going to the concert and I was so jealous. Still to this day, I'm so jealous. But anyway, my cousins went to the concert and that like, reignited my Taylor Swift like listening and obsession because I was jealous. And then, so I started like obsessively listening to her, but I wasn't like a public stan. Like I wasn't like telling people I was a Swifty, you know? And then in 2019, right before Folklore came out, I watched Miss Americana and I was like, I love her. Then Folklore came out. I watched Long Pond Studio Sessions. Like I was obsessed with her. That's when my Taylor Swift obsession really started was like COVID. So like, I'm very late, like I know. Folklore came out and it's still my favorite album of all time. Nothing will ever beat it. And she's my favorite musician of all time now. And the one other very prominent one was After. <laughs> During my One Direction phase, I read After, like I told you on Wattpad. It got me into reading. I read the whole After series on Wattpad when I was like in seventh grade. I remember I'd be in my seventh grade science class and Anna Todd would update every time I was in that science class. like. She was on that shit. Like it was literally like every day. And me and the girl next to me were reading it and we would read it. And I remember when we got to the bet, the like unveiling, us in science class being like, no. So I was obsessed with after at that time. And then I like completely forgot it existed because that's how I got into like reading romance in general. Like early high school, I would say, I started getting into romance, which is like different. Like I read a lot of Colleen Hoover, the off campus series, like all the stuff that gets you into reading romance, you know? Like I read that in high school. I read a lot of Christina Lauren, some Penelope Douglas. And like that was all during high school that I was reading all those. A lot of like companion novel series. I was big on those, like sports romances, like the off campus vibe. But anyway, I'm getting off topic. Back to after. In 2019, or 2018, they announced the movies were coming out. And so I reread the published books. I was like, wait, this is so nostalgic and literally reminds me so much of my childhood, which is so bad because they're so explicit and definitely shouldn't remind you of your childhood. Me and one of my friends reread them and we were like, oh my God, I can't wait to see this in the movies. Like this is literally my childhood coming to life. Like this is so iconic. So we like pre-ordered movie tickets. We were so excited. We were like watching all the cast interviews leading up to it. And then at that time, me and my one friend made book Twitter accounts, like it was my first book fan account, like where I talked about books and it was during when After was coming out. So like all my stuff was about After, I was posting about After every day. And this was when I was a senior in high school. And so we were posting about books and we were having so much fun. And from there, from like talking about After on that book Twitter, I met a girl on Twitter who recommended me reading the Addicted Callaway Sisters series. Cause she's like, if you like After, you'll like Addicted. Now looking back, I'm like, what was that comparison? Because Addicted is like a beautiful masterpiece and like After is like, <laughs> After. <laughs> I love it, but like. So I read the Addicted Cowboy Sister series in 2019 or was it 2020? It must've been early 2020. I think it was like March. Cause I remember it was during when COVID was hitting. So yeah, March, 2020, I was reading Addicted and I fell in love with it. I was like, I need to talk about this. I, I just need to talk about this with someone. And that's how I made my first YouTube video. Isn't that crazy how things like come together? Like I was a One Direction fan. So I read after, so I started getting into published books. So I created a YouTube channel. One Direction is the reason I am here in front of you right now. <laughs> like, it is so crazy to think about. I thank that girl every single day. I, I thank her for telling me to read Addicted Cowboy Sister series because it truly changed my life because that was the catalyst for starting my YouTube channel because my first video, I don't even know if it's up anymore because I used to use, I'm stupid, and I used to use copyrighted music in the background of a lot of my videos because I wasn't making money back then. So I didn't care if I was monetized or not, but now that my channel is monetized, I can't have any like music like that or I'll get, my account will get deleted or something. I don't even know. So I did take down a lot of my old videos, but it was called like romance books to binge during quarantine. And I talked about after and off campus and the Addicted Callaway Sisters series. And then I posted on my Twitter account and was like, hey, I, I posted a YouTube video. If you guys want to check it out, whatever. I got like such a positive response, but then I didn't post for like six months after that. So I just posted that one video didn't post for like six months because I was at home. It was during COVID. And then I moved back to college. I had fully online school because of COVID. And I just started posting on my YouTube channel again about books, but uh, I did trope videos. Like you guys know how I started, like just doing like brother's best friend trope, enemies to lovers trope. And the books that I was recommending were stuff I'd read when I was like 15. Like they weren't really good books. Like now that I look back, but like I owe so much to those books for getting me to where I am. And like, you only know as much as you've been exposed to, you know? like. 
like now that I've read so many more books like obviously those books aren't my favorite anymore I have so much more to compare them to and I've read such good stuff now and I'm obviously older and seeing things from a different perspective like you're allowed to like grow and change in what you like and what you prefer and when I look back at those videos and it's like books I would never recommend now but I'm like it truly changed my life talking about those books and the fact that it all started with after and the addicted Calloway sisters series like it's just like crazy to think about where I am now all because I was a fangirl so if you're ever feel like you need to stop talking about the things you're passionate about or you're embarrassed or people make you feel bad don't listen to them because it changed my life being loud about my passions like it, it literally is my entire life <laughs> like it's cr so crazy and wild for me to think about this like series of events and how it happened I'm honestly proud that I did that because I was embarrassed when I first started posting because only people from school see it you know you're like oh, these people from school are gonna see my forbidden brother's best friend trope video like that's embarrassing but like it's only embarrassing if you let it be embarrassing. Like embarrassing is a mindset. And I was like, you know what? This is what I like. And if these people make fun of me for it, then I don't want to be their friend, like whatever. And I wanted a space where I could talk about it. And I saw such a positive reaction. Other people wanted the space where they could talk about it. And now there's like a whole community of us and it's amazing. Oh, I almost forgot the most important part. Making that Twitter account is how I met my best friend in the entire universe. Like my literal soulmate who I know will be there till the day I die, like no matter what. I met her through Twitter. Having internet friends was like never something I ever thought about. How it happened was she was also posting about after. It was literally after when before the movies came out because now I haven't even seen the most recent one. Like I'm so like out of it now, but I think about it back before it came out. Like that was the most nostalgic time before it came out. <laughs> before the first one came out and she like was posting about after and we I think we were mutuals and like we would comment on each other's stuff but I had no idea what she looked like. Like we didn't know each other at all. We would just like comment back and forth here and there. And there were so many girls that I was friends and mutuals with on Twitter, but something inside of me, like the stars and the planets and the fates and everything aligned. Somehow I ended up DMing her and asking her for her Snapchat, which I've never done before. And I didn't do it to anyone else. I only did it to this one girl. And I don't even know why I did that. Like it was literally the universe. Like, thank you because it's, again changed the entire course of my life but we added each other on snapchat we sent like a few little awkward snapchats at first and then she sent me a video and i was like wait what she sent me a video of her talking about harry styles and i still remember that first conversation because i never sent videos to anyone on snapchat before we just start sending videos all day every single day we had everything in common i was so like mesmerized by the fact that we had everything in common like it was actually crazy everything we talked about like i would just like my jaw would drop because I'm like, how are we so similar? I've never met anyone I've connected with like this. Later that year, she ended up moving to the same county that my grandma lives in, in New Jersey. Like, what are the odds of that? She's still my best friend to this day. And we, we hang out all the time in person. We visit each other. I talk to her all day, every single day. Like when I tell you, like we don't go a minute without knowing what each other's doing. I also got that from Twitter again, from Wonder. It all started with One Direction. One Direction changed my life. <laughs> One Direction made me who I am. One Direction gave me a career. One Direction gave me my best friend. One Direction literally made me who I am today. I just, I'm mind blown even talking about it, but yeah. Thanks One Direction, I owe you my life. <laughs> so yeah, if that doesn't inspire you to be loud about your passions, I don't know what will, but those are all the things I fangirled over in my life. The Sunday, oh my, it's so late. I need to go to bed. This was a great cozy Sunday and this was a great way to end it just sitting here talking to you guys. But yeah, I'm so grateful for you all. I hope you're all doing well and safe. And yeah, if you want to follow me on my other social medias, they're all linked down below as always. And I'll see you in my next video very, very soon. Bye.